All right, hello everyone and welcome. I'm very grateful for this opportunity to be here and share with you tonight. So I don't know about you, but I've had quite a year and a half. Actually, I think I do know you've had one too. So I've heard Reverend Nadine and others speak here on COVID and I think it's such an overwhelming phenomenon that we've all had our own unique experience and we all deserve to have our own take on it. Besides, I was halfway through preparing this and believe me, it's not like preparing a song. So this is my version of what I learned on my COVID non-vacation. Though I did think, wow, I can finally get that room decluttered and made into a den and all those other things that I never have time to do, not so. I commend those of you who did these fantastic projects. I kept on keeping on. So we've all been through this thing, a tragedy everywhere affecting everyone in the world, unprecedented in our lifetime other than climate change. I was first struck by the fear and the pain, the suffering and the loss. I remember hearing of the first person to die here of this virus from overseas and feeling an uncommon fear. Then 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, unbelievable, 100,000, 200,000, inconceivable, unspeakable. There was the loss of work, income, homes, hugs, family visits, creative expression, dancing, theater, simple shopping at the grocery, gathering at church, et cetera, et cetera. I felt deep pain in the pain of, of those around me, the healthcare and essential workers suffering, the effects of isolation, quarantine, lockdown, I was surprised by surprising human behaviors and dealt with my own COVID sickness at one point. And there was at the same time considerable political and social disharmony, which seemed to affect most of us deeply. But I also knew from the start that this was a spiritual opportunity, not something to just get through, get past. Sometimes we must be willing to be pierced and vulnerable to grow deeply. And the purpose of bringing this all up now is for healing and growing and ultimately getting closer to the essence of life, truth, and love, God. I knew I must go to God. That's what all this church personal growth and practitioner training is all about. Connecting beyond what seems to be with spirit until it clicks and feels like truth, home, feel a safe peace. So all during 2020 and till now, I kept working to keep my mind open, turning to what is there here for me to learn, to understand, to grow into, to do. God, what would you have me know? One of my favorite phrases. I was determined, I mean determined, to not be defeated, not be a victim, and to glean the benefits. I kept saying to myself, my spouse, clients, and anyone who would listen or not, this must be a growing experience. It has to be. I was on a mission to encourage myself and all of us to be open to what I call blessings, lessons and blessings. The changes are first internal. Thoughts become things, our Ernest Holmes tells us. So this was the journey. Thankfully, right away on the positive side, I loved how I saw people pulling together in these unexpected, delightful, and also unprecedented ways. Remember the Italians leaning out their balcony windows, singing to each other? It was wonderful. I saw that someone had moved their piano on a platform out to the driveway many times, serenading their neighbors as we were quarantined. People were walking more, smiling, and even waving in my neighborhood. So my first big gain was this amazing sense of oneness, unity, a consciousness. Wow, we are so connected, whether we like it or not, so interconnected. 
throughout the US, the entire globe. Something happens across the Atlantic, and here it is in Alabama and California. We are more interrelated, more interdependent than I ever even thought. The whole world going through the same thing at the same time as never before in our lives. It was undeniable, an aha. One people, one humanity, one divine expression. Rarely have I felt more oneness than this. How about you? And I felt and I saw compassion. Because we felt connected, I think there was an outpouring of compassion, the expression of this oneness. Empathy and understanding started showing up immediately. I saw heartfelt and funny signs on people's lawns and houses. I saw the caring, loving, giving in the hardest circumstances. I'm recalling lots of Time magazine covers. We all know the scenes, the tireless, selfless health care workers essential workers and families. This leads directly and is intimately related to service with a capital S, God quality. I was amazed by our capacity for compassion and service. This is action. Emerson says, every, every man is the inlet and may become the outlet of all there is in God. I saw a teacher who do drove down the streets of her kindergarten students with funny signs in her car windows and songs and bells and whistles. I have an 80-some-year-old Christian science friend. She went to the store, waited in line, bought groceries for her friends, and delivered them to them. She was unafraid, she told me. Our own church was a glowing example of service. Our rise to Zoom services with our tech wizards and our warm hosts, our women's group Barbara's daily newsletter, practitioners' monthly calls to congregants, caring circles. This warmed my heart. People stepping up, our own Sam and Diane with their fabulous videos. Humor, also a necessary and wonderful service. I stepped up too. I learned to Zoom sing, camera, no audience. Made congregational calls, led chants, and then this. So, so happy I had something to give. And the truth is, of course, that we all have something to give, something to contribute, always. I work part-time coaching life skills one-to-one -one with adults with intellectual disabilities. I was very grateful to keep working as an essential worker at a distance and by televideo. I had made a let's beat COVID list in April 2020 with a happy face on it. Stay in place, keep your space, cover your face. Then keep learning, walk, go in nature, call, text, write, family and friends. Later I added, try something new, be creative, laugh. And last, be grateful. Think of three things every day. Not a bad list. I'd ask, what's one good thing from all this? And I'd share too. Well, I'm walking twice as much, learning to cook better, using the park. So we've been talking about oneness, compassion, and service. I need to go back for a bit for a word on self-compassion, self-care. At the start of all this, I heard someone say it was not a time, not a free time just given to write your book, but first of all, a time to survive. This was a time to keep safe and healthy, keep in communication with family and friends, get outside in nature and walk, to take it easy on yourself, not put on more pressure. Now, I'm all about thrive, not survive, but to everything there is a season. I had to deal with what I needed for myself, for my own struggles and challenges. I know many people turned their lives around, but I think it was largely through the process of having time to be still and reflect and to evolve. I got scared at times. Where was God in this? 
I admit. I could get in the trap of feeling sorry for myself, irritable, ask my spouse, <laughs> judging, judging my reactions, not good enough, not spiritual enough, all that old stuff. I had to deal with fear, anxiety, frustration, resentment, differences regarding masks, distance, and vaccines. I had to develop, to develop more patience, acceptance for my sanity. The Bible says, God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I had to stop myself realizing this is not helpful. I knew this was a charge, a call for me to give myself tender, loving care and be open to God's loving care. In isolation, I realized I needed to give myself all the attention, affection, appreciation, and support I needed or wanted from others. I realized how necessary support was and how taken for granted. I learned Zoom and realized what a godsend it was, connected with my sister, extended family, then old friends more than ever, and other support groups. I got a gratitude partner. What blessings. And my biggest essential constant support in self-nurturing was keeping up with my daily meditation, reading, and prayer. I had to go deeper. There's a song, All the Roots Go Deeper When It's Dry. So I had an excerpt of something special to share with you, but I just found out that I, I can't do that. So. I don't watch a lot of YouTube videos, but a trusted singer friend of mine posted this stunning video. And if you can look it up afterwards, it's Jane Marchewski, who calls herself Nightbird, with an E, on America's Got Talent on YouTube. So it's Nightbird. Maybe you've seen it? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So. Often the judges on these shows irritate me, but this time many of their responses seemed poignant and sincere and real. I was just stunned by her presence and her performance. So um, since we can't see it now, I'm going to just try to tell you the story. So hopefully you'll watch it. This really, really lovely, uh, elfish-looking young 30-year-old woman with short hair, uh, thin, comes out and they ask her the usual questions and they say, so you want to be a professional? And then they say, and are you working? And then she says, uh, no, I haven't been uh, working for the past year. I've been dealing with cancer. And they, and they look down, you know, and uh, she says, but I'm okay, I'm okay. And then they say, one says, how are you now? And she says, oh, I still have cancer in my spleen and my liver, but I'm okay. And uh, she says, it's important that people know that I'm so much more than the bad things that happened to me. So they, um, they tell, ask this, her title. She says, it's OK. It's her original song. And this is the story of this last year of my life. So even that sentence is interesting. So I'm going to sing you the chorus. <laughs> Um, she's, the chorus is, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, if you're lost, we're, if you're lost, we all get a little lost sometimes, and it's okay, something like that. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, if you're lost, we get a little lost sometimes, and it's okay. But it's just when she does it, it's, wow. So, that's that. Um, So she gets a standing ovation and the golden buzzer and all the things fall down, the golden things. And um, she falls to her knees and she's overcome. The judges called her most authentic and said, you are the voice we need to hear this year. And I get chills even remember, remembering it still. And after it shows her running out of the theater and arms up, I did it, I did it, and just free as a bird. So some of the other quotes that you didn't see are, um, and afterwards they say, she says, 
I have a 2% chance of survival, but she spreads her arms, but 2% is not 0%. 2% is something. And this, perhaps, my favorite. You can't wait until life isn't hard anymore before you decide to be happy. You can't wait until life isn't hard anymore before you decide to be happy. So this song, her presence is like a great big hug to me, a permission, so reassuring. We all do get a little lost sometimes, and it's okay. It's humbling. Nightbird makes me look at all I bitch and complain about and say, why do I ever worry? She's dealing with this. I must be able to deal with that. At my age and stage, I'm humbled by her young wisdom. Who are we not to try to follow her example? She's an antidote to feeling sorry for ourselves, to open our hearts. She was determined to not be defeated, to live out her life and be happy, to hold on to the tiny strand of hope she has one moment at a time. She has, as we all, challenges and difficulties, as we all do, but she never gives up. She rose to her heights. She went for it, big time. Even in maybe her last moments here, Nightbird is giving herself away in loving service. And I bet she's aware that she's leaving a legacy to encourage and inspire us. So now, I hate to say it, but the fourth wave, the Delta COVID variant is here. Can you believe it? And we thought we were about done. It's been very frustrating and sad. I saw someone on the news say, I'm done with COVID in resisting the guidelines. I understand that feeling, and I can relate, but it's not done with us, it seems, it's surging again. So here we go again. Time to persevere. All the roots go deeper when it's dry. And it's OK. So throughout this COVID experience, I kept going to, what do I want to keep? And what do I want to change or let go of from this experience? The blessings. Definitely keep the compassion, self-compassion, and the service. Not new ideas, but reminders. Keep the cooking and the walking. Oops, walking starting to fade. So I imagine you've recalled some of your own experiences and hopefully have come to more awareness and maybe resolutions yourself along the way. So I invite you to move forward in expressing life. So what do you want to carry into the now, into the future? So let's close our eyes and breathe and imagine for this experiential, what unhelpful productive thought or habit did you take on or perhaps had BC before COVID that you would like to release and replace Maybe that extra half pint of ice cream. So take a few moments here. Feel free to release that. And what did you incorporate, add, that you want to keep or increase I did puzzles, a new thing. Maybe it's hugs. So we'll pause. And last, what's your biggest gain or your favorite moment of oneness, compassion, or self-nurturing from this whole experience. Okay. So we've come through to this point with challenges, losses, 
overcomings and triumphs. We did it and we'll do it again. We have expanded, deepened, and there must be more for us to learn to become wiser, stronger, more loving, more fulfilled. So let's stay in oneness, compassion, service, self-nurturing, and gratitude. Let's decide to be happy now. It's OK. It's OK to be a little lost sometimes, and it's OK to move forward, and it's, it's OK. Life is still good, fragile, and precious. So happy rest of 2021. All right, so let's turn within. So in this moment, staying deeply in touch with ourselves, we are deeply in touch with our spirit. The one essence, the essence, the substance of all life, the one true power, the power of love and goodness and freedom and joy and creativity and harmony and abundance. It is everywhere and always. And it is here right now. It is who I am as an expression of the divine and as every beloved participating in this service. How grateful I am to know our oneness, our self-compassion, and that we are able to extend this outward to others, to all life. And it is good, and we are blessed. We allow ourselves to release all that is unwanted, stale or old, old thoughts, beliefs, habits, feelings that don't serve us. We let them be replaced with wonderful new thoughts and imaginings. We move forward. The divine is expressing itself through us at every moment. Where it may seem like there is a loss of or lack of health, all of God is there, healing, revealing, being wholeness. Where there may be a sense of loss of love or relationship, God is there, bringing forth the good, the love we need. God is a source of our work of our divine activity and our prosperity in great abundance. And we express ourselves to the fullest in our God-given creativity. And let's move into the silence for a moment as you set your individual intentions. And let us say together, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. So I am so grateful to know and speak these truths, knowing that it's OK. All is truly well. It is good and very good in spirit. We are blessed. We are loved. We are provided for. And I give thanks to the precious spirit within and everywhere. So I simply release this word into the perfect love, law, and light. And so it is. Amen.